so today we are driving a 2011 Saab 94X Aero. That's very special. I want to thank Kimberly for letting me drive your vehicle, hey. uh, let alone any any of your vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> it comes to Saabs, the 94X is probably the rarest Saab there is available. The 94X comes with two different engines, but we're only really going to talk about one. We're going to forget about the 3.0 LF1 engine. I think it's uh, naturally aspirated at 265 horsepower. The Aero is equipped with a LAU engine, 2.8 liter V6 turbocharged at 300 horsepower and 295 foot pounds of torque. This vehicle is weighing in at about 4,600 pounds. That is not far from a 97X with a towing capacity of 3,500 pounds. One thing I really like about the 94 is it's no longer than your typical Saab 95 from like 99 to 2009. It's the same length, so it's still very manageable to drive. The Aero gets about 15 miles per gallon, city, 22 highway. Ooh, 17.6. Yeah, actually it's telling me average 17.6. This is one rare crossover. It may share the premium Theta, Theta platform. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, the same as the Cadillac SRX, and for some reason, these were built in Mexico. But regardless, not many were made. Actually, according to the numbers, they're saying that it's just over 800 now. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, it they used to be, 500, yeah, then 600, 600 and now the count's like 8, 800. 14, or 8, 18, or wow. something like that. And about 60 of them were from the 2012 model year. I tried to look up to see how many Aero models there were. Would you happen to know? I don't. Nobody I know seems that to know. There were very few made though. Well, this is, since there are no official numbers and I can't find it anywhere, I looked. Less than half. I, that's what I'm thinking because I, I went through like a database where people submitted their VIN numbers. Oh, yeah. And there was a little over a hundred and I decided to distinguish all the ones that were arrows mm -hmm. and it's just under half. So this is a super rough guesstimate going based on just that statistic alone. If there's if there's just over 800 models, I would say there's just under 400 possible arrow models mm -hmm. of the 94X available ever. If I had to compare this to any other Saab, for me, I want to compare it to the new Gen 95. It's mm. the same interior, basically. It's got the same instrument cluster, the same buttons, the same radio. Uh, it's got the same engine, kind of, sort of. It's got the same LED lights in the back. It's got the same style wheel. It's not the same wheel, and it's also a different bolt pattern, but it's got the same look to it. But to clear up the engine thing, this is the LAU engine 2.8 V6 turbo, which to me, I think it's the same as the other engines in the new Gen 95 and even the 93s, which were actually the engine code was LP9, I believe. Mm -hmm. But uh, the LP9 engine code was updated or changed to LAU. So as far as I'm understanding that, it's the same engine. The only difference is the the new Gen 95 and the 94. Uh, got more boost to reach that 300 horsepower number. I really like, I really like the back seat space. That's that's one thing I lack with most of my cars. There's actually a, a pretty good amount of leg room. Like look, if, even with this all the way back, there's still leg room. Yeah, there's still leg room. Yeah, it's great. So this I'm gonna read off my notes because there's no way I'm gonna remember this. The cargo space in the 94X is about 29 cubic feet in the rear. If you put the seats down, you get about 61. Not as much as the 97 where you get about 80 cubic feet. But what's interesting is the 95 wagon actually has more cubic feet than this. The 95 wagon has about 73 cubic feet and the 93 wagon is about a foot and a half shy from matching this vehicle. But it is interesting, the wagon, I mean, still, it doesn't have the height. But no, yeah, but yeah. But the cargo space is so much bigger in the 93. With 300 horsepower, hauling about 4,600 pounds, the 94X can reach 60 miles per hour in about 7.7 .7 seconds. Would you happen to know the top speed? I'm just curious if you've tried. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten this up to over 130. 145 yeah. is where it supposedly tops out. I sort of got a ticket when I did that. <laughs> as far as driving it, it's very nice. It's very spacious. It's comfortable. It's practical. Affordable? Eh. Eh, that's hard to argue when you can't 
really find them. And if you find them, I think they're at a point where they're allowed to be a ridiculous price, so what do you what do you do? Car of this rear can be your best friend or your worst enemy. With very few out there, it can make this car very desirable. However, certain parts could be hard to find or come by, and God forbid you get in any kind of fender bender or an accident, because the odds are your insurance is not gonna deal with it and total out the car. So would I recommend one of these? Yes. Absolutely. If I was in the market for a crossover and I had a garage to keep it clean and safe, nice, you know, just everything nice. Now, I don't want to get dinged up. This is the most precious Saab you could buy. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for the most precious Saab, this is it. Yes, definitely, definitely search for one and buy it, especially if it's an Aero. Again, I want to thank you, Kimberly, for letting me drive this vehicle. Very nice vehicle. And thank you. that's it for now. I'll see you guys on the next video.